Mullins will take this kick off. And we are underway from Green Stadium. And a good crack for Mullins and a nice spin move. And Anthony Mullins has us at midfield to start first and ten. Hi again, everybody. It's Inside the Cardinal Playbook. I'm Rick Cole of the William Jewell College Sports Network with Tim Crone, and we're talking a little bit about the McKendry football game. And I don't know what you say. We, we've seen so many good things, but we saw some bad things also. It was really two different games out there on Saturday in the loss to McKendry. Yeah, it's definitely a tale of two halves, no doubt about it. It's got to be frustrating for the players, number one, which is most important, the coaching staff, number two, and number three, the fans. Uh, because I see, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I've said this for nine years now, but uh, uh, I thought McHenry was the best team we played, Rick, up to the first four. And uh, uh, we played really some good teams. Drake's an outstanding team, you know, yeah. and uh, Mines is consistently always good in their right. rank. But McHenry, we just didn't match up well against some great quarterback. But I thought we played our best half the second half of that ball game. Well, I'll even make the case for us playing a pretty good half in the first half, with the exception of the big plays we gave up. I thought we played with them except for the scoring. And that sounds strange because we were down so big at halftime. But again, like I said on the broadcast Saturday, it's like us chasing the carrot. We see these good things. We know we are capable of them, but just can't put it together. And I think the consistency thing is the thing that Sean Weigel will talk about. Yeah, and it's just no no margin for error right, right now. Right. And that's to be as blunt as you can be. We have no margin for error. We just can't make those kind of mistakes. All right, Tim Crone will visit with the head coach of the Cardinals, Sean Weigel. When we return, it will be Coach Weigel and Coach Crone inside the Cardinal Playbook. At National Bank of Kansas City, we're all about you. Like you can bank 24-7 with online banking and online bill pay. And you can deposit checks anywhere, anytime with mobile deposit. And yes, you can receive the amazing five-star customer-rated National Bank of Kansas City You Matter experience. I'm Bob Cutler, owner of Creative Consumer Concepts. At C3, we're all about playing courageously and thinking outside of the box. We know that life is as much about play as it is about work. So when National Bank of Kansas City challenged C3 to an all-out water gun fight, we knew we were going to take them on. National Bank of Kansas City values our relationship. It's a place where we know we matter. Ready to bank where you matter? Visit bankofkc.com or call us at 913-905-2100 or 816-407-0300 to find the branch nearest to you. National Bank of Kansas City, a place where you matter. Remember FDIC, equal housing lender. Find testimonial, not a paid endorsement. Ratings on Zillow.com. Standard data rate supply. West and throwing to grab. Oh, what a he catch. Got that ball. How about that post catch? Oh, man, he went up to the ball in the middle of the field. He went up and got after it now. Cardinal fans, welcome to this segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook, and I'm here with Coach Weigel, and we're going to talk a little bit, first of all, in the first segment about uh, the game last week. And, uh, it was really a dichotomy, a tale of two halves. There's no question about it. And I'm just going to let you roll, and then I'll kind of chime in a little bit, and we'll talk about it because I saw positives in the ball game mm -hmm. as well as negatives. Yeah, there, there were. Uh -huh. There were both. Um, you know, and it's um, the consistency factors. If I were to point at something negative, is we're just not consistent week to week. You know, we play well defensively for a couple of weeks, and then – I challenge them not to let that go while we get something else going, and then and then we come out. And we don't start fast um, defensively on Saturday, and and played better offensively, you know, the whole game. But uh, you know, it's just those things. We're going to stay consistent in our approach and and what the expectations are, and keep talking about that, and keep talking victory, and, and doing all those things. And eventually, it's going to happen. I hope it happens sooner rather than later. And uh, but that's that's the approach. We're staying steady and, and with it. Well, I think that's a good answer. Uh, if anybody's ever been in any athletic, uh, been coaching anything or anything in athletics, but particularly in football, it's a th it really is a three-phase game. And uh, you can't play like one week well on defense and play poorly on offense. Your specialty teams can't play bad or make huge turnovers and expect to uh, play well. Now, you played a team, and, and I think McHenry uh, – my evaluation in the first four games, I thought they were the best overall team. I thought they were huge up front defensively. I thought you handled them really well. Uh, your schemes were great. Uh, and then defensively, 
you know, we had to turn over on specialty teams. Uh, I mean, we can't sugarcoat it. It is a fact. Uh, Two-yard drives you can't give up to a team like McHenry. But consistency in all three areas. And I think that that's what we've seen. You know, the one ball game I still go back to uh, the years I've done this with you was last year against Indy. And everybody was so shocked. And I, and I thought, well, you know, we've had the capabilities of being able to play like that mm -hmm. for a long time. And I know you feel the same way. It, it does take that consistency on all three areas, right? Yeah, absolutely does. And, and uh, we're getting it from a few players. You know, Robert Hurd every week is, is oh, playing really well. He's really played well. Um, you know, and Logan Winter probably has his best game of his career uh -huh. at left guard for us. And, and uh, you know, there was uh, some guys just really – a lot that of positive. Are, yeah, they that consistently do it, and you you can count on them, you know. But we need more of those guys, mm -hmm. you know, and those are the guys that uh, that you go out there with, and and when you have that, now you ha you have a legitimate chance of beating anybody any week. And, right. Uh, you so, have the capabilities. Yeah. Now back to and again, we're talking a little bit about sports psychology and the game of football. Uh, but you're trying to build a bridge, and it's tough to build it when it's been difficult to get the bricks up to the bridge. Yeah. And that's kind of where you guys are. And when they, you know, and again, you don't want to play, say one play, but a turnover or something of that nature can really put a, a negative seed, not only really in the fans, in the, in the team, the atmosphere. I was at the stadium with the window open and, watch, and doing the game. I saw, you know, you get a turnover and it's like, uh-oh. Because we're, you know, we're hanging with them, we're moving the football, we're doing good things. Mm -hmm. we got to believe that we can overcome those things. Right. That's not easy, is it, Coach? No, no, it's not. And, and uh, you, but you got to continually reinforce Absolutely. that we can. That's why you're the that coach. We're capable and, and we're motivated at times. We just get capable and motivated all the time. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then good things will happen. And uh, that's what these guys, these, they got to just continue to hear about it before they'll eventually just be about it. You know, and, and go out and, and uh, do those things week in, week out. doesn't matter who's in the stands, where we're playing, whatever. That's good teams go out every week. Right. You know, and, and uh, you get better. So consistency is part of getting better. Well, I, I think definitely let's just stay positive. I think getting better, the offensive line, I think they played their best game of the year. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, I, and you brought up Logan, and I thought, you know, he did an outstanding job. But I thought all of them, uh, they were big, you know, and Lucky Barr who was a player of the year in the GLVC, you guys made him really, we didn't call his name very often at all. Yeah, yeah, and that was, uh, um, by game plan, we know we needed to make them run because they roll eight dudes through there mm -hmm. on the defensive line and their interior four, three of the four were over 300 pounds, you know, so there's a lot. They were of, huge. A lot of, a uh, lot of man inside right. there and, and um, we knew that we needed to do some out of pocket things, some screen things, things of that nature to get them turning and running. And uh, we had 52 snaps the first half, and uh, you know I think that took its toll on them a little bit. Cause we come out in the second half once we get the ball and we we go on a 17 play drive and 97 yards and, right. and score. A beautiful drive. Yeah. One of the better drives of the year. Yeah, five third downs we picked up, and you know we had, you know it. You, you have to be positive. 26 first downs offensively, and we were 12 of 21 on third down. Almost 400 yards total offense. We were. We were over. They, we had to switch something in statistics. Give that. Minus forty-seven yard. Yeah, that was team. That that was so uh, always 47. a confusion uh, up there, and I just let it go. So we only had three ninety-one, but that would take you over the forty-seven yep. uh, snap. Well, coach, we're going to get back in the next segment. We're going to talk. We're going to stay positive. We're going to talk about homecoming up uh -huh. coming with S and T. Uh, we're looking forward to it. I know you guys are. Everybody's ready for homecoming. It's supposed to be a nice day, so okay. we'll get back with you in the next next segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. find another touchdown at the end of this game. West going up, throwing up for Mullen. What a catch! Great catch. Great catch by Mullins. Great catch. Cardinal fans, welcome back to Inside the Cardinal Playbook. And Coach, we're going to talk about homecoming, which is a challenge for every head coach, whether it's high school, college, you know, it is a, it's a different game. Yeah. 
Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about how you prepare a little bit differently for homecoming? Well, you just you kind of put the expectations out there early that our responsibility is to go play well and, and uh, have a chance to win the game. You know, that's kind of the... Uh, that's the object. Well, yeah, and, er and everything is kind of built around the homecoming game because they do the Hall of Fame stuff after the homecoming game. You right. Know, they, they do the parade stuff at halftime and all that stuff, So, but it's about the game. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's, it's an important deal for us, uh, you know, to play well. And, uh, again, in front of a home crowd, it'll probably be our largest... Um, this year, you know, I want them to just go ahead and replicate homecoming every home game. Because homecoming is really fun. Well, planning's already done. Yeah. Just do it again. Do it again. You know, every, yeah. every tailgates every work the same. Yeah. The whole deal. Yeah. And so, uh, um, you know, that's that's something we'll continue to uh, put a bug in their ear that uh, every week's homecoming. But, you know, it's it's something we just get a, get the team focused on what what our task at hand is and, and go play and have have some fun. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Have some fun. Now, we, again, as a conference opponent, uh, Missouri S&T, we've had a lot of close games. We've been successful. Uh, you know, uh, It's about a 500 the last six years or five years anyway. It's been really good f football games. Let's talk a little bit about uh, S&T defensively. What are you going to look at there coming yeah. into the Saturday's um, game? Yeah, they're a little, they're a little bit different. Um, we'll see a guy. They, they put a guy in every gap, basically. There's five guys up on the line of scrimmage, whether it's three down linemen or fourth down linemen, and the linebackers Backers. walked right up wide defensive ends and then this kind of uh, hybrid backer mm -hmm. that's eight yards deep that just runs mm -hmm. you know a so little bit like a bear defense yeah it a is there bit. is yeah because when you get everybody covered and sometimes they flip the they reduce the front both right. sides and, and then you're now in a true bear right bear look but uh you know they're they're um it's a different it's kind of a different kind of animal it's like be like facing the wing t once every yeah, I know. I've been there and done that. So, in high school, you get a little bit of that more than you guys do. Yeah, and uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, we've had some success against it, um, and uh, they were really uh, strong up front last year. They were. That was one of their strengths. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they'll be good again just because it's not something we see every week. Uh -huh. So we've got to be really good in our preparation for it and, and then, uh, you know, go play will be okay you know in the past uh, as far as their offense is concerned uh they pretty you know they had a good receiver there a couple of years so they try to get the ball to him you know uh but they like to run the football you know, a couple of years too they really are a type of club that plays to their talent are we looking at the same thing again yeah yeah we really are um you know they're they they've got a quarterback there that uh, he's pretty elusive and uh if you don't you don't keep him Contained, contained you, you can get in trouble mm -hmm. with them. So that's going to be a big uh, emphasis is how we keep that guy caged yeah. a little bit, um, you know, and and, uh, and then make him throw it as, as as much as possible from the pocket, and we should be okay. You know, I in this league, but in an any league, I, I find him more and more the uh, quarterback that is uh, really versatile and can scramble around. You can't, as an old defensive guy, you can't, you can't account for that. You could call a defensive signal and try to defend what you see according to formation that you're originally shown. But when the quarterback is unaccountable, uh, it makes it tough on a defense, yeah. doesn't it? People don't realize that, that the, the broken play is the worst play. It is. It is because they get out and now they have two options. Right. All right. All right. And you so we're looking like you want to come off that guy, I'm gonna hurt you with my arm. All oh, right. You don't come off, and I'm gonna hurt you with. So my arm. we're looking at that type of kid yeah. this week. Yeah, he's yeah. he's pretty athletic. Yeah, and it's really important that you do stay at home and then rally to the ball. You know, I think that uh, a lot of people don't realize that even though he is a scrambler, you still got to stay at home and then rally the mm -hmm. ball when yep. you know and do the best you can. Especially teams, we got to talk about him. And you were an outstanding. I've said that at the beginning the show. You've been an outstanding uh, special teams coach. I know how much emphasis you put on it. Uh, but I but I think people are starting to see how it could really turn a game around. Can't. And uh, this this past week we saw our you know really good play from our kickoff return unit. Oh, oh yeah. And uh, had an opportunity to do some things and really had some great efforts of the uh, Vinny Bakoff and Clay Stolsey, Ant Mullins on the returns and, and Nate Agarwa doing some really good things blocking wise. If you saw there were a lot of bodies on the ground mm -hmm. when our kickoff return unit was out there and that's fun to watch. You know, because it's you know, like, ooh. Yeah, we uh, we actually had great field position offensively. You know, that was big in us playing better uh, offensively, too. It's because we had such good field position. We were anywhere from the 45 to the 35. You get that every time, right, Coach? Yeah. You take that every time. That's right. I think it, uh, 
what was it? Average starting position was the 33 yard line, so that's so my, than the to national. my point. Yeah, yeah. to yeah. my point. So that, yeah, that helps. Yeah, absolutely. It makes a big difference. And then you know, back to the kicking game. You know, uh, you know, place kicking. You know, long snapping. All those things. People. I mean, they can be. And when you don't have a lot of margin of error, in any really, actually though, like, not just here at William Jill, but every football team has a very slim margin of error. Right. Or because if you start turning it over, yeah. you're in trouble. I mean, yeah. I don't care what level you're yeah, in. It doesn't matter who you're playing, but that, you know, and, and it just it, it becomes exponential when you have a good team you're playing, you know, and, and uh, with a quarterback that can hurt you. And we saw that last week, you know, and uh, where we had a bad snap and uh, down to the two, and you know, hey, we probably just kicked it right out of the back of the end zone, taking a safety on it, and, uh -huh. you know, instead of giving them two, and then at least we get to play again. But that's a situation that comes up that usually you wish you would have covered more and yeah. you didn't. If you've ever coached, I've been there, and then you coach and coach and never see it again for three years and then you see it again. Yeah. So, I mean, it, some of this is just human nature. It's, if, it's a game. If but dog rabbit could, would have, should have, but yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, but, uh, yeah. That, that's exactly where we're at. Okay, now back to the homecoming game. Uh, might want to talk about the start. I know it's a little bit different, and uh, you might want to give a little kudos for them to get out there and support us. Yeah, absolutely. It's a 1 p.m. game. We played uh, both for other home games at noon. Um, this one, with all the activities involved, we needed to keep it at 1 o'clock uh, for planning purposes. But uh, should be a beautiful day. Um, it's supposed to be really nice. Yeah, I know well, you've had great weather. weather. Yeah, we have been fortunate. Be a lot of uh, tailgating going on, and and. Uh, Whatever else ensues out there in the parking lot, I don't get to partake in. But, uh, you know, we'd love to have everybody come out. Well, Cardinal fans, I think it's time everybody comes back to homecoming, see Coach Weigel and the, and the Cardinals uh, win their first uh, ball game of the year and conference game. I think that's going to happen this Saturday. Hopefully everybody will be there to support you. Uh, hopefully, we can, and I'll be real frank, I hopefully we put two halves together this week. Absolutely. And that'll make a that's, big difference. That's the plan. That, that'll make a difference. <laughs> well, that's the end of this uh, segment of Inside the Cardinal Playbook. Back inside the Cardinal Playbook with Tim Crone, I'm Rick Cole, and uh, Coach, now s &T comes up as you and Sean Weigel talked about. Uh, this is a series that's been a pretty good series uh, through the last several years when we've been playing them. Yeah, it's anybody's ball game Saturday. There's no question about it. It's been a great series. Looking forward to it. Hopefully, uh, we'll be able to put two halves together and be consistent. And, uh, you know, really, consistency is the key word probably this week. Yeah, I would say consistency would be one of the words. And at, at a one four, what's happening psychologically? After talking to Sean, what do you feel this team has got to do? Got to get confidence in themselves. You know, when they do have a turnover and that, we talk about that margin and error is very limited. When it, you got to believe that even though we made that mistake, we still can overcome it. And we haven't reached that point yet in the program when we need to. Right, absolutely. Well, the game Saturday will be a noon start. Uh, excuse me, will be a one o'clock start. Most of our games are noon starts this year. With the exception of this one, it'll be a 1 o'clock start, and our airtime on the William Jewell College Sports Network will be at 1230. Our director today has been Julia Parker. I'm Rick Cole for Coach Tim Crone. Thanks for joining us inside the Cardinal Playbook.